Porto. 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 <laughs> Is the trip to the Duro Valley really worth it? I'm gonna be taking you guys along with me and you can be the judge of that in the comments. Today's video is all about our excursion to the Duro Valley in Portugal. Here's what to expect. We're gonna be going on this beautiful and breathtaking cruise on the scenic Duro River and then we're gonna be going to two vineyards where we're able to try some wine. And of course, we have to have some food. So we're gonna be having a Portuguese lunch. And listen, let me tell y'all, it was good. <laughs> if you haven't watched the previous episodes about getting to Porto and a day in Porto, be sure to check that out on my channel. But I know y'all don't want a longer intro than this, so let's get straight into the video. Good morning, beautiful people. We are going on a tour to the Dolo Valley today. Nice. I'm very excited. So I'm gonna bring you guys along. First things first, we did our tour with CM Tours and it came to about $95 per person. We met them at the meeting point and then our ride began. In order to get there, it took about two hours or so of a bus ride and I sure slept the whole time. Good morning, beautiful people. Again, we're in this beautiful city. I'm gonna show you the bridge that they stopped to for literally two seconds, but it's so beautiful. Our first stop was to the Point Metallica de Ragua. I'm sure that I messed up that name, but it was a bridge in the area and we were able to stop to a cafe as well that was nearby if we needed to get something to drink or if we needed to use the restroom. But the bridge though, it was so cute. We were able to get some cute shots before we had to go. The tour could be in any order, but they took us to the cruise first. They were showing us the dams of the region and then they took us to the spot where the boat docked. So we got off and we got onto their boat. very cold on the day we went and it was raining but listen I was still sitting in the front of the boat not on the inside because we paid for this okay we paid $95 for this if you were to do a cruise like this and you were going in the winter time I would highly recommend that you layer up with your gloves your hat your jacket have layers underneath because it was freezing it was so windy as you'll probably hear in some of the clips but that's okay because the views were immaculate. At the beginning though, we were a bit afraid because it looked very gloomy, it looked overcast, and we were like, where was the sun? But the sun finally came out, and when it came out, we ended up like, the hello? Her. I love that view, you just look so chilly. Oh my gosh. I'm then on the cave there. We are in Dura where they are baked sure. for making pork wine. Pork has become very popular in the States recently due to a TikTok trend. It's wow. very good really? to cook with. And if you're not a wine drinker, it is very soft on the palate and nice in the back of the throat. It's not too strong. It's very 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Nice. <laughs> This part of the tour didn't have any talking, but the site spoke for itself. We were able to see a lot of the vineyards, we were able to see different companies, we were able to see different houses. It was absolutely gorgeous, and we were able to get some of the best pictures ever. to our first vineyard which was Quinta S. Luis. Here the Coke or Coca, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, wines are basically created and they took us through the full process of how that happens. Uh, 
interestingly, this is one of the oldest wine houses in this region. It was just so cool to be able to see equipment that was there from years ago, from like the 1800s. Look at this beauty. It's absolutely gorgeous. It was so cool to be able to see a vineyard for the first time. She showed us the grapes where they're harvested and she was telling us about how they are literally stomped on to this day so that the juice can be extracted. For example, for this particular wine, we still do the crushing by feet in a small lagar, which is not so common nowadays as you can imagine. Uh, we do fermentation in barrel. Um, and also the aging process too. She told us more about the process and fun fact, white grapes are actually more sensitive than red grapes. That was so interesting to me. So they put ripped faster, so obviously we those ones first. We were able to go to the barrels where wine is stored and she was telling us that they have wines in there from like 1965. I wasn't even thought of in 1965. Uh, even though we are doing some experiments with Portuguese and Hungarian oak, Mostly French oak works very, very well to give uh, pretty balanced flavors to the wine. The type of barrel that is used basically helps to infuse a particular type of flavor into the wine, which was also super interesting. With medium sweetness and like in the white with high amount of sugar. It's important to drink it as a digestive. Then over here we make production. Now we go to the wine tasting. I always feel super bougie when I'm just mixing around the wine in my cup like da -na 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 -na. I don't swirl it very good, but I feel bougie and that's what matters. Wow. But this white. This is so good. It's really sweet. The smells Interestingly though, these wines are merged with a variety of flavors, which is so, so, so intriguing to me. <laughs> so they'll have different fruits, they'll have different flavors, and once you swirl it around and you sniff it, you're able to smell all of these juicy flavors. And so it translates in your head somehow when you take a sip, then you're able to like experience all the flavors. And I just think that's so cool. I don't know if it's psychology or what it is, but it just makes the wine taste better in my opinion. The white wine they had there was definitely my favorite, but I'm also a white wine girly, so I guess that's why. I also like sweet wines. I'm not a real wine drinker. I just like sweet things, so if it's bitter, it's not for me. <laughs> Let me tell y'all about that bus ride though. Literally, I felt like my life was at risk. <laughs> Not because the driver drives bad or anything like that, but because I would look down and it would just be a long drop. A long drop and I'm just like, oh, if this bus mistakenly just goes off course, like it's over for me, like I... We are at this beautiful winery. This is the second one on the tour and it is just as gorgeous as the first and even more beautiful because look at the view. about the not to be dramatic tell me about the soup just now yes yeah, so for the soup it was a bisque it was giving flavors and hints of uh, squash definitely a lot of root vegetables I definitely tasted the carrot the carrot was very forward very carrot forward nice overall nice. 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 it was great <laughs> this lunch though oh my goodness yummy yummy in my tummy my friends got the codfish patties with tomato rice and I had to be different of course and I got this like soup with meat in it if you're Bahamian it reminded me of some pea soup and I love me some pea soup it had all the meat that it needed. The only thing that was very odd is having pasta in it because I would have never had a dish like that. But it was really, really good. So, you know, and their bread, oh my goodness, their bread is to die for. We got some coffee. They showed us the 
area where grapes are squashed and they were saying that people cannot leave the area if they are like a grape squasher they would have to be there for hours doing it and he gave us the graphic information that you know they have like a little area where people would just go and pee on the side in the area and I was just like okay I hope the fermentation kills all of that but it was still very informative and something that I would have never seen before we went to our last wine tasting of the day. Realistically speaking, I was sick and tired of wine at this point. Like, I was like, I could not have another drink. We left the majority of our wine untouched, but what was not untouched is they had their homemade olive oil, which was so cool. And we had it with some bread, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. I would definitely buy olive oil from there too, because they also produce it. After all of that, we head back on the bus to go home on another long drive. And I'm sure we all slept on that one too. And that was it for our time in the Duro Valley. Let me know in the comments if this is something that would be worth it to you. In our next episode, we're going to brunch again. We finally made it to the Gaia Cable Cars. We're going to dinner at an Asian place. And then we are going to be prepping for our trip to Sintra, Portugal. And listen, Sintra was a dream. If you didn't know, I'm your new favorite YouTuber, Eudasia. <laughs> so be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to follow for more content because we besties now. Thank you for watching. Bye. Because all I want and I pray, I believe in the better days.